Hello everybody, welcome back. This is a short session on exception generation and handling in RISC-V code, which is present in Sci-Fi, Hi-Fi, Wanderer, the road. So I have started again with the Hello World application in C and plugged my exception code and assembly into this. So the generate exception function which is called here is uh, written in assembly which is present in this uh, exceptions dot s assembly file so the this assembly file has three functions one is the generate exception function which generates the exception and a trap handler which, uh, which handles the exception and uh, wait forever function okay and uh, a quick note, I have intentionally uh, named this uh, handler function as trap handler uh, instead of exception handler. So before we get into the code, it's uh, worth noting what does a RISC-V spec say about exception, trap, and uh, interrupt. And I have never read a, a better or clear uh, explanation than in the section 1.6 in unprivileged spec size okay so it says that um, the term exception refers to the unusual condition occurring at runtime associated with an instruction in the current risk 5 hardware thread whereas the interrupt refers to an external asynchronous event that may cause a risk 5 hardware thread to experience an unexpected transfer of control so those are the definitions for exception and interrupt and the most important one here is the term trap to refer the transfer of control to a trap handler caused either by exception or an interrupt so this is the reason i have uh, named this handler function as trap because both exception and interrupt are handled in the trap handler okay Let's build and watch the preview of the execution first. Now let's get into the code. So this uh, generate exception function basically has uh, three parts. One is uh, mapping the trap handler address to the machine trap vector register. And the second part generates an exception. You can see here, so it's trying to load a word uh, from the address pointed by T0 into the register t1 so t0 has an address of 1 so basically it tries to fetch a word from address 1 and then this board so this one is not a addressable memory so it would uh, cause the a uh, load access fault exception and there's a, a wait forever loop which as a function which is just to make sure that uh, the execution waits until the exception occurs but since this is an exception uh, it's synchronous the moment it uh, moment it hits this instruction which causes the exception then the execution will jump into the address which is uh, stored in this machine trap vector register okay so LA is a pseudo instruction which basically loads the address of trap handler into this T0. So, this, so the address of this function would be stored into T0. Then I'm using the CSR write instruction to write that address into the machine trap vector register. Okay, so let's see here. Scan. 
this is the address of a trap handler and mg rec should have that address you can see the trap handler address is loaded into the mg rec after this and now t0 would become one should be one and uh, it's trying to load let's see what happens so now the exception has occurred and the execution jumped into the trap handler and if you want to know since uh, here we for sure we know that uh, this is the one that caused the exception but uh, when you have a huge code and when multiple there can be multiple reasons uh, why this execution would have come into this trap handler in that case you would just go and read the m cause register that's the cause of this exception so let me see here what are all the causes that can be let's go to the Jupyter manual and so m cause so if you see here code load access fault so the interrupt bit should be set to one and the load access fault should be five so let's once you read this m cost register into t0 so the, what's the value here t0 should be okay five that means the cause of or the load access fault is the exception that has caused this execution to jump uh, to jump into this then there's an mepc it's so the exception program counter so the f address of the except address of the instruction which caused this exception would be stored uh, in this mepc so if you see here if you read that value into t1 so it would point to fe8 which should be the address of this line okay so now that's how you know which inside the trap you can find out which has caused this trap and which address if you read the mp so the mepc register will give you which address then basically oh uh, Conventionally, or in most of the processor, what I have come across is that would be some uh, once you get an interrupt or an exception, then you it would be in a register that unless you clear that, it would keep occurring again and you would be jumping back into this. But whereas in uh, RISC V, all you need to do is when you up, let's say that you have handled this exception here, then before you jump back or get back into the uh, main uh, caller so mrit m return is the instruction which would uh, take your execution back to the caller so how m return works is basically it would jump it would just jump back uh, into the value or the jump back to the address which is stored in the mepc register so when a, when the execution jump inside the handler it would have the address of this line which caused the execution so we should make sure that when you get back you go to the next instruction but i know that this is a risk file so this is a 32 or the 32 i course so i have incremented by four so if you see after embed it goes into the next next instruction okay and it goes into the jump forever so that's how the uh, execution generation and then the execution jumps oh, sorry the exception is generated and the execution jumps into the trap handler and these are few things so a few basic things to find the cause of the trap and then uh, find the address which caused the trap and then you get back into that by overwriting this mepc
Now let's see what would happen if I just comment these two lines. So the MTAC uh, register is loaded and the exception occurs and it jumps into the handler and it just reads the address of the instruction that caused the exception but it does not modify that so it would just MRED would take back to the initial instruction and again you can see here it keeps jumping back into the trap handler again and again. So that's that's what would happen. Quick, uh, easy to understand flowchart would uh, look like this. So the generate ex inside the generate uh, exception function. This is this is what that happens actually. So you map the handler to the machine trap vector and uh, you generate an exception. But this wait for trap is needed only if you wait for interrupts but for exception it's it's synchronous and uh, once that uh, interrupt or exception occurs the execution will jump inside the trap handler and then you find out the cause and get the origin address if you are interested in that and then there can be multiple within this handler you can uh, jump into different functions or sub handlers inside this based on the interrupts and exception and handle that okay and I would also like to point out these two notes one is the clearing the exception in risk 5 is a, a slightly different from the traditional processors because mostly you would just clear the exception or interrupt by writing some status bits are clearing some sorry or, uh, some bits in a register and second one i would like to point is the if you see here this there is a dot b align 64 which stands for byte alignment of 64 the reason why you need this is if you go if you see the um, t vec register a machine trap vector register in uh, FE310 core it says the so the base address is stored from 2 to 31 bits and it's a 64 byte alignment that means that if you have you can see if the address is not aligned properly then you would see that the execution wouldn't uh, jump inside the trap handler that's two and also I would also like to point out one more thing like the so the risk five spec allows a risk five core to have these uh, privilege levels so user supervisor and machine and the uh, spec makes it mandatory that every risk five core should have a machine mode but the other modes are all optional so the, if you see the FE310 core, it doesn't have a supervisor mode, it just have a user and a machine mode. So whenever this MTEC, MCOS, M, these are all machine registers and they will also have an equivalent user and a supervisor uh, registers, okay? And that's the link for the uh, code in the GitHub, okay? Thank you.